We live in a world where food seems amply available and certainly affordable. Will it stay like this forever? If we consider current trends, the future looks less certain. In 30 years, the global population will have risen from 7 billion today to 9 billion or more. To feed the people, industrial farming promises a miracle solution. Almost all the large farms of 100 hectares and more concentrate on the production of 12 crop and 5 animal species that already today make up 75% of the world's food. But the industrial approach that accounts for 30% of today's farming relies heavily on unsustainable fossil fuel. Monocultures are prone to diseases and are vulnerable to climatic changes. Their yield is increasingly transformed into biofuels or used as animal fodder, leaving less food to feed the people. And industrial farming technologies contribute to the degradation of farmland, and new agricultural land is scarce. In 2008, we had a most recent glimpse of what it means when global production can't meet our demand for food. The price of rice, for example, tripled in just three weeks and never dropped back to previous levels. The price increase especially hit the poor of food importing countries. And it is the poor population in these countries, such as small farmers struggling to survive on less than $2 a day, who can't afford the higher food prices. Food insecurity and poverty go hand in hand. Even in industrialized countries such as Switzerland, the working poor felt the price hikes for basic food commodities. How can we prevent future food security crises? There is no miracle solution. It is rather a necessary transition process for the entire food production and distribution system. But one long forgotten actor takes central stage, 